Be, because I'm awful at time management, um, we, we have a short amount of time, but we do have time for a couple of questions from the audience, maybe one or two. Uh, so I am going to go right over here to the first question. What we'll do is we'll just go around the table, and it'll just be one minute. Uh, that's, uh, that's about all I can give you. Make sure you turn those uh, wireless mics on. So no more than one minute. We really have to keep it tight because we have a, a busy schedule. So go ahead and ask your question. And if you can't hear, uh, do we have a, a mic for uh, the questioner? All right, here we go. Okay, um, first of all, I want to thank all six of you for your public service. I'm concerned about two, the two of you who spoke about the oil extraction tax. As someone who fought Fran Pavley's regulatory fracking bill last year because it's too... Hello? 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 Okay, um, there you go. Okay, because no amount of regulations can make fracking safe. And when that bill was signed, it is now wrapped up, ra uh, ramped up fracking in our state. The Monterey Shell contains three quarters of the nation's oil reserves. And uh, if any of you read the very dire UN uh, climate report last week, it says that in order to prevent extinction of us, we need to keep three quarters of the uh, fossil fuels in the ground. The oil extraction tax, especially the proposal that is now tied to higher education, makes us dependent on that fossil fuel teat forever. So I want to know, is there, I, nobody wants to stick it to big oil more than I do. Is there a creative proposal up here amongst any of the three, uh, six of you who uh, we can somehow make big oil pay without tying it to barrels of oil extracted? Okay. And also, what do you want to do about crude, crude by rail? Crude that, by that's rail. actually a very good point. Uh, so we'll start with Patrick and we'll go down the line here. So one minute on, on the oil companies, I guess. Well, I mean, this, this is an education for me. I can't tell you that I know how to do this. I'm interested as well as anybody else. Oh, sure. Wonderful short answer. She's filled in. Can you hear me? No. Okay, so uh, last week I was very proud to, I don't know, I was very proud to co-host in my city, Manhattan Beach 2025, a discussion about how Manhattan Beach can become carbon neutral by the year 2025. Densi Nelson, Joe Galliani, some other wonderful environmentalists pulled together a fantastic panel. It's something I'm very interested in pursuing as a mayor because uh, you're right, no matter if we tax them, we're going to become dependent on the revenue and we have to all look upon ourselves what we can do to reduce our dependency. Yes, I do have a plug-in hybrid where my husband does. He wouldn't let me bring it today. We're fighting. Um, <laughs> solar panels, stuff like that. But we have to encourage it and we have to encourage it in our local municipalities we can do incredible work here. If the state's not going to lead on it, we can up there. But if I go to the state, I'm going to lead on that as well. All right. Go ahead. Thank you so much for the question. I want to frame it a little bit differently because I believe that actually an oil extraction tax uh, helps to disincentivize use of oil, the, the way that the pricing would be impacted. But I don't think that's enough because I am concerned about what you're saying about relying upon those tax revenues. So what I would focus on is what do we do with those tax revenues? We need to invest them in the development and encouragement of alternative energy sources and moving us toward those. That's why I'm in favor of increasing our renewable portfolio standard, which is already one of the strongest in the country, but we can do more. And in investing in active transportation, that's a fancy word for walking and biking, but making that safe for folks as well as investing in a comprehensive transit system around Los Angeles, getting to the airport, getting the whole way to Santa Monica, and including the South Bay in that as well. Uh, I'm a big supporter of renewables and making sure we're investing in uh, renewable energy. But more importantly, I think this state needs to begin a shift. And we need to, to look at instituting a carbon market tax. And that means everyone's going to pay their fair share. And that includes corporations. Um, we really, this is a big thinking kind of, kind of item. It's something that we're going to have to move towards slowly. But um, we all need to pay our, pay our fair share. We need to pay for what we use. No one can get out of it. And it goes to, um, to our uh, ability to fund the things that are necessary here in the state of California. Great. I'll just be quick because I spoke earlier about um, the extraction. Um, I 
currently don't support the, cur uh, the governor's bill to dedicate a huge amount of the uh, revenues from extraction to go into higher education. I think there has to be a better way. I don't want to become dependent on those funds, and our higher education needs a better system, a more solid solution. Um, I went to UC Hastings, so I've, I've benefited from uh, public schools and public higher education. Um, also, the crude by rail you mentioned, I am very concerned about that kind of an extension happening here. Um, the, the problems that have existed, there are uh, way too many environmental, thank you, as well as safety issues. I, I don't want my daughter and my daughter's friends and you know, anyone else really impacted in that kind of way. Um, so I would not support uh, a crude by rail program. I think we have to focus, like I said before, on renewable energy sources, thank you, and making it more affordable for everyone to have access to these sort of renewable sources. The fact now that solar panels can be leased is a, is a great thing, and I think we have to find other ways for other types of renewable energy programs to be affordable and accessible to everyone. All right, Ben? Hey. Well, it's hard, to, hard to, to, to add to what's been mentioned because uh, I think that the, the, folk, the folks up here, I think, did a really good job of explaining. I absolutely agree. Uh, with the idea that you know, if you look at Prop 10, for example, which created the, the cigarette tax that now goes to first five early childhood, it's true that at the end of the day that revenue source has, has started to drop, but we can all argue that's a good thing because it's helped to disincentivize smoking as we've done a lot of work to try to you know, get people more aware about, about the dangers of smoking. Uh, so I'm, I, I agree with Sandra on that issue. Uh, I, I'm, I think at the end of the day it's all about trying to create more renewable energy sources. I'm proud to have been a big part of the effort to try to get more uh, solar panels on our schools uh, in my, my home school district. Uh, I, I totally agree with the, with, the, with the raising of the renewable portfolio standard. I think that's super important. As, and, and at the end of the day, it's all about where, we, where do we go with AB 32. Uh, I'm proud to have the, the endorsement of Fran Pavley, uh, who wrote AB 32. We, we need to kind of in, in make that a more, uh, a stronger uh, mechanism. I'm, I'm very interested in, in, the, in, the, in the development of the cap and trade system as we go forward, but it's all about trying to find new, better ways for people to get around and for us to, to fund our, our okay. to, to fuel our, our, our economy. All right. Thank you. Uh, so we have time for one more question. By the way, now that I heard the answers, I like Sandra. Oh, okay. Very good. Me too. <laughs> we're, we're voting on the answers? No, uh, I said I oh, wanted to hear them. I'm sorry. Where are we going? We're going right here? Okay, um, we got one more, and, and this, this, that's what we got. So I'm Nicole. I'm a current UCLA student. Uh, is, if SCA 5 had passed, it would have allowed affirmative action in public universities in California. I wanted to know your, uh, your position on that or a similar proposal. That okay, we're going to start with Amy and then go around. Then you're, you're going to get to be last, and you can hear everybody else. Okay? <laughs> you're saying you want to hear what I think about affirmative action in public uh, universities. In public universities? Yeah, you know, it's... It's really hard because, you know, people say, hey, I work really hard and I get really good grades, but maybe it's unfair because I'm of some sort of um, a group that doesn't get affirmative action. Well, I think we need absolutely affirmative action um, because we have to make it fair access and we have to make our universities represent the diversity of the people here in California. And... We need to learn from each other, and we need to be surrounded in a in a upper um, in our higher education by folks who come from different places than we do, because that's how we're all going to learn and be better. So I do I support affirmative action wholeheartedly, even though perhaps I would not personally uh, benefit by it. Although I didn't get good enough grades, perhaps at that time. But anyway, uh, no. But I'm just I, I'm trying to be a little bit funny about it. Absolutely support affirmative action. You're looking at one of the biggest beneficiaries of affirmative action right now because white women have actually been the ones that benefited the most from affirmative action in education. I'm not trying to contradict you. Um, and that, what that shows you is that affirmative action is a successful program if you give it the kind of time that it needs to work. This is modeled after the GI Bill that revolutionized the middle class because it gave preferred access to a particular group of folks who were coming home from war. Now, we have seen concrete evidence of the impact of not allowing affirmative action here in California, and that is the th types of concerns that we have at UCLA, where there are so few black students in the student body that they are organizing, they are posting online, crying out for an educational uh, environment that takes their concerns into account. I think we all hope for a future one day where we all have the right kind of start and the right kind of equal footing that we won't need a program like this, but until we actually live in that world, we need this kind of uh, program in California. Thank you. 
I'm absolutely in support of affirmative action uh, here in California. Uh, we are all immigrants, um, every one of us, and, uh, well, there's a few that aren't, but for the most part, we need to make sure that it is equal footing for everyone because the fact of the matter is, is we, we don't all come from um, the same uh, background, socioeconomic, and the diversity in our colleges is what makes this country great. It was, makes us strong, and uh, I'm ho wholly, um, fully for uh, getting in front of action back into our schools. Um, I also support affirmative action. I think that we need to take an approach where you look not just at uh, one's racial background or religious background, but you look at their socioeconomic status. I think that that's a good way to incorporate the di true diversity that exists in our communities, in our state. Um, I'm a beneficiary in some ways of affirmative action at UC Hastings where I went to law school because when they looked at my portfolio, at my background, they looked at my socioeconomic background. They looked at the fact that my father was in the military and that he eventually went bankrupt. Um, they, they went through that sort of experience, uh, the fact that I worked when I was 16 and helped pay for rent as part of who I was and what I could bring to law school. And I think that that kind of an analysis, incorporating socioeconomic background, I think that should be incorporated into the affirmative action pool, um, not just your race, not just your ethnicity, not just your religious background, uh, but again, your socioeconomic background. Thank you. I also support affirmative action, I, and I, I, I do like uh, some of the comments that Barbie made. When I served on the Board of Regents, I was very involved in the effort to look at the way we were doing our admissions within the context of Proposition 209, which of course continues to be state law, and looking at, a more, at trying to put in place a more holistic admissions system where we can truly take into account the sorts of factors that Barbie just mentioned. Uh, looking at the hardship people bring to the table, looking at the, at the, at the, the path they take toward their application to college. We need to maintain a very diverse uh, school system, and I, I am concerned that our university uh, is not, does not look like uh, the, the population of the state. One of the, the, there's, a, there's a challenge there in terms of a, of a growing dis disequilibrium as the, as the state becomes more and more diverse and, 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 and as the power structures begin to shift. Uh, one of my concerns is that there's not going to be as many people in the state legislature who, who kind of know the university and support the university, et cetera. So I think the UC actually has a real, and the Cal State system as well, both have a real vested interest in making sure that, they're, that, they're, that there's a diverse population of students coming through. And, and, and I think affirmative action is a great way to do that. I support it. Uh, in the absence of it, I, I really think we need to work hard on, on a holistic admissions approach. Patrick? I ended up getting into college based on geographic distribution, which uh, if I can do that, affirmative action is, is an essential part of reflecting society. I work in an industry where, besides the people in front of the camera, the people behind the camera are not reflective of uh, society as a whole, American society. And we work very hard at the Writers Guild to try to change that and create programs that were designed to be exactly what affirmative action has done for the, in, in, in college and in, in recruitment and other ways for, for, for a generation. It works very slowly. As, as the husband of an African American with, with mixed race children, I, I, I can only plead with society to continue to fight for affirmative action. Great. All right. So we're, we're going to wrap up here with just a one-minute closing statement from each candidate. Uh, I'm going to start with you, Sandra, and we'll just go down the line uh, one minute. Thank you. Uh, I want to thank you all for coming out and spending your time today because uh, you've heard an awful lot of sometimes dry policy answers from all of us. I hope that what you've heard from me in my answers is that I have the understanding and the experience to know what kind of legislative solutions we can get past here in California. Uh, if you take a look at my website, and I want to encourage you to check out standwithsandra.org, you're going to see a long list of endorsers, uh, both members of Congress as well as state senators like Hannah Beth Jackson, Carol Liu, a number of local activists as well because they've worked with me and they know that I can get this job done. And what I hope all of you know from what you've seen of me in, in the public spotlight or in personal conversations is that I will be an independent voice in Sacramento. I've not spent my career trying to get to elected office. I've spent my career fighting for survivors of violence and for the public interest. And that's what I'll continue to do no matter what position I'm in. So when I get to Sacramento, I want to be able to bring a fresh perspective and stand up for the issues that might not always be popular, because that's what I've always done with my career. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sandra. And now, Betsy, you can go up or stand or yeah. do whatever you want. Uh, well, I have been an advocate for justice and equality my entire life. 
Um, I'm honored by the fact that when I was in the legislature, I received 100% scores from the Congress of California seniors, from the California League of Conservation Voters, from the State Labor uh, Federation, from Equality California, from Planned Parenthood. I have a record. I'm a fighter for those who don't have a voice. I want to go back to Sacramento to keep, to keep fighting for those who don't have a voice. It is imperative that uh, we maintain a really strong um, democratic base here in California. Uh, things are getting a little moderate in Sacramento. We need to re remain progressives, and we need to make sure that we do have uh, people up there who are willing to take on corporations, who are willing to take on those who are fighting against things like Prop 30. There were a lot of people who were heavily funding um, Prop 30 and wanted it to fail, wanted Prop uh, 32 to go through. Um, these are the people that we have to fight against. They say they're Democrats. They're not. We have to be very, very careful about who we elect because um, if you have a record, and you, and you know my record is being progressive, um, I'd be honored to have your support. I'd like to go back and continue fighting for all of you. All right, thank you. Thank you. Now we'll go to uh, Barbara. Again, I'm Barbie Applequist, running for State Senate. Um, I'm running, you know, as a resident who's been here for 14 years, as a parent to a six-year-old girl, um, as a cancer survivor. I'm running as a daughter of a veteran. I'm running as a daughter of a, a granddaughter of someone who fought in World War II. Um, I have an understanding of sort of the unique issues that the people who live here, who've lived here for years, who've started their families here, that they are going through. And I want to represent that voice up in Sacramento. Um, I'm running because I've been up at Pepperdine for the past couple of years, getting a great primer on the issues that are being faced up in Sacramento. And while I'm up there, I'm talking with people who are conservatives. I'm talking with people who are Republicans. And I'm able to convince them to compromise on the issues because I care about them and because we all share this desire to grow our state, to grow California, to grow its, in its prosperity. Thank you. Um, I think that's the kind of leadership that we need. I think we're not going to be getting our supermajority with the current corruption charges that are happening up in Sacramento. We need people who are coming up there with fresh ideas, people who are focused on moving ahead the things that we care about. Um, so thank you. I hope you will consider me Barbie Applequist for State Senate. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Ben? Ben Allen, I've, I think I bring to the table a, a, a combination of very deep roots in this community, a really serious commitment to this community, uh, a lot of fresh ideas, a lot of energy, and also some very serious experience in public policy making. Two years at the state level at the UC Board of Regents, six years on the local level right here in Santa Monica Malibu School Board. I'm so proud to have the support, the endorsement of so many of our, our community's most respected leaders. Los Angeles County Supervisor Zevier Slavsky, State Senator Fran Pavley, a former uh, State Senator Alan Cerrotti, a uh, guy blast from the past. Uh, there, there's some, some uh, wonderful clubs that have stood up to support me as well. The West LA, West, sorry, the, 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 the West Hollywood Beverly Hills Democratic Club, the Progressive Democrats of the Santa Monica Mountains, Santa Monica's for renters' rights, so many of your allies in the struggle for progressive values all over our region. So I'm running. As, a, as someone from this community, someone who cares a great deal about public education, who cares about trying to solve some of the, the whipsaw impact of, of, our, of our budgeting in Sacramento to try to create more stability in the way we do budgeting in Sacramento, someone who cares deeply about the environment, about transportation development, and I really appreciate your support. Thank you. Thanks so much. Great. Patrick. So, so five years ago, we had a Democratic president and we had a, a filibuster-proof majority in the United States Senate for a few months and we had the House of Representatives. And we got the ACA, but what else did we get? I feel like we squandered an opportunity. We now have the supermajorities in the, the, the state Senate and in the Assembly, as long as we have those, and a Democratic governor. My proposal to you is squander no longer. If you vote for me, you will get someone who will fight for the middle class, for the things that we care about. Patrick Verone, thank you very much. Great, thank you. And Amy. I'm going to come out here and see if it works. All right. Make it I just want to say that I am so honored to be up here on the stage with these other candidates and Dr. Imbasiani, who is not with us today, because I think you've got some really great Democrats to, to choose from. You've got people who've been fighting their entire lives or their entire grown-up lives for really good values. So it's an honor to be amongst them. And I am running for state senate because of my 11 years serving the people in my community. I have worked really hard to work with people to form solutions. I've had to work with people who are Republicans. I've had to work with um, people who didn't think that the environment was uh, something that we should be concerned about, but I convinced them it was something in their economic interest, so that, that got them to come along. 
everybody I've ever worked with is supporting me. Every city council member I've ever worked with, every school board member. I've got the support of Almert Suchi and Janice Hahn and George Nakana and Warren Peritani, Lynn Woolsey, a great progressive up in Northern California. And I would be honored to have your support here in West LA. And even if you do not support me, I will work for your causes. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you. And uh, I, I think you'll join me in saying we have a, a group of really great candidates here. And uh, thank you all for coming out. And so we're going to take about a five minute break. We're running a little late. About a five minute break. And then we're going to go into the County Board of Supervisors debate. Thank, uh, thank you.